From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Good Thursday morning. We have multiple fires that are burning within the viewing area, so we'll go ahead and get right into it. We'll start with the freshest of the fires, which are these fires burning in Yakima County, bringing just a ton of smoke into the Yakima Valley for this morning. This retreat and Rimrock fire around 8,000 acres, 0% contained, several level 3 evacuations in place for this one, also just a myriad of level 2 evacuations, and this font is comically small, which really underscores the point that you can find all of these evacuations listed online at applevalleynewsnow.com. Now it's twin fire is the Black Canyon fire. It is also almost 8,000 acres. It is also in Yakima County and it is also 0% contained and we also have multiple level three and level two evacuations in place for this one. You know where to find these listed at. Okay, now on to fires that are burning in Oregon. This one, the Lone Rock fire, which has been burning right at the corner of Morrow County, Gillum County, and Wheeler County. It's now actually almost out of Morrow County altogether, but we're still tracking it just for good measure. It's just shy of 135,000 acres, 40% contained, still level three, two, and one evacuations for southwestern portions of Morrow County. You can find all those listed online at applevalleynewsnow.com. Now let's pivot over to the Battle Mountain Complex, which for now is comprised of the NF Owen and the Monkey Creek Fire, but this Boneyard Fire is about to merge with the Monkey Creek Fire. So I think eventually the Boneyard Fire will be a part of the Battle Mountain Complex. I think in total, this is well over, I mean, I, I know that this is all well over 100,000 acres. I don't have the exact metric for you. Not a lot of containment with that either. And we do also have multiple evacuations with this complex of fires as well. These are sort of old evacuations. I mean, they're, they're current, but they were issued a couple days back. This one was actually issued last night. The Boneyard Fire north from Forest Service Road 21 to the approximate intersection of Forest Service Road 21 and Forest Service Road 2104 and east from Board Creek Road to the East Morrow County line. So that's the newest level three evacuation that we have. Also, we have level twos and level ones still in place for this Battle Mountain Complex. Again, not to beat the dead horse too much, but you can find all these listed online at applevalleynewsnow.com. And I'll show you what these fires are doing to our air quality coming up on Good Morning Northwest, which starts right now. Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, the Rimrock Retreat Fire in Yakima County has grown to 8,000 acres. We hear from an area resident who had to evacuate his home. And a fire in eastern Oregon is currently the largest active wildfire in the country. We have the details coming up right now. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good morning, Northwest. On your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Dalal. And I'm Jill Sperling. It is Thursday, July 25th. We've got a lot of fires to talk about, do. Jill, don't we? We smell the smoke outside. It's definitely affecting our area, but let's go ahead and get into that right now. So we're continuing to track the latest developments of fire season 2024. So let's bring you up to date coverage on the larger fires that are burning across the Northwest. So the Rimrock Retreat Fire has grown to 8,000 acres, according to new information from the Natchez Fire Department. It is burning five miles west of Tyaton city limits, and it's prompted evacuations for children at Camp Gormley and surrounding residents. We spoke with resident Monty Knapp, who says he heard a big bang prior to the fire starting across the, st uh, the street from his property. He says he had to help two other family members evacuate his home, including one who was bedbound. And Knapp says the hardest part is not knowing what's happening right now. When I first started, I mean, I was dragging hoses all the way from my property across the highway to the neighbor's property and you know, trying to wet things down and then they killed the power. So then all our pumps went off and there's nothing we could do at that point. And new information this morning, the Yakima Tieton Irrigation District has declared a state of emergency due to that Rimrock Retreat fire. The district says the fire now poses a significant risk to its critical infrastructure. A rolling shutdown of its systems is being implemented to reduce canal levels and minimize environmental and infrastructure risks. The Washington State Department of Natural Resources Southeast Region has temporarily closed the Atanum State Forest due to increased activity from the adjacent retreat fire burning near Rimrock Lake. 
all Atanum State Forest Recreation Sites will be closed until further notice, except for the Atanum and Atanum Meadows campgrounds. The closure also extends to the BBQ Flats and Cascade Camp Recreation Areas and Weenass Valley Green Dot Road System, which the Black Canyon Fire impacts. Firefighters continue to face challenging conditions as they fight the Battle Mountain uh, Complex fire in Umatilla County. Yesterday, the crews faced high temperatures, gusty winds and thunderstorms in the area. The wind even caused some spot fires to pop up as far as a half mile away. Firefighters are working on suppression efforts while they mitigate the risk by removing unburnt vegetation along Highway 395. Crews will continue mop-up operations and patrolling on the 4,485 acre, that's the North Fork, uh, North Fork Owens Fire, which stands at 40% containment. Division resources patrol the perimeter overnight to help support local initial attacks for any new starts. And for more up-to-date information on evacuation levels and zones, go to applevalleynewsnow.com. The Durkee Fire burning in eastern Oregon is currently the largest active wildfire in the country, according to new data from the National Interagency Fire Center. National data shows Oregon firefighters are battling the four largest wildfires in the country as of Wednesday morning, including the Durkee, Cow Valley Falls and Lone Rock fires. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, many state and local leaders were in Cleelum yesterday celebrating the return of salmon to the Yakima River Basin. We have the in-depth story in just a few minutes. But first, Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth will have your weather forecast. Keep it here. Good Morning Northwest will be back in just a few minutes. The Make It Ford Summer Sales Event is on. I want that. Amazing offers on the best-selling trucks in America for 47 years. Don't wait. Get the deal you can't miss. Lease a 2024 F-150 STX Super Crew for just $3.99 a month. Only at your local Ford dealer. Stan's gonna ride the Nebula Drop Tower. Finally! I'm ready to ascend to the clouds to go where no dino has gone before. Goodbye, Earth. Hi, Alice! Whoa! He doesn't know it comes back down? Apparently not. I'll let you know when I hit orbit! Drop Tower, I get it. Triple Play has fun attractions for everyone, including go-karts, mini golf, and many more, all attached to a cozy hotel. You thought it would bust through the ceiling? You came through a portal from another dimension. Weird stuff happens. Phones were made to help us connect, and somehow they've made us less connected. Which is ironic. Don't you think? We try to put our phones down, but we need to pick them up to see the menu. We can't watch something without also watching something else. Ironic. 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 But look, here's a phone company who wants you to use your phone less. That's ironic. Yeah, but in a good way. Let's find us again with Us Mode. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Traffic jam. Ugh, and I'm already late. It's the Moore Furniture Anniversary Truckload Event. We've been serving our loyal customers since 1997, and in appreciation, our showrooms are filled with truckloads of our top-tier products at factory direct prices, ready for delivery straight to your home. During our anniversary event, we'll give you special 48-month financing with no money down and equal monthly payments. For a limited time, when we deliver your purchase, we'll pick up, repurpose, and donate your gently used pieces locally. Visit your local showroom for the best deals. Tiffany Smiley is not who she says she is. Tiffany Smiley started a PAC claiming to raise money to support conservative candidates, but contributions were funneled to pay off her own million-dollar campaign debt. Of the almost $800,000 she raised, only $24,800 went to candidates. Instead, Tiffany used the money on luxury travel and to try to pay off her massive debt. Tiffany Smiley deceived her donors. Don't let her deceive you. I'm Dan Newhouse, and I approve this message. The Make It Ford Summer Sales Event is on. I want that. Amazing offers, like the Built Wild Bronco family. Get the deal you can't miss. Lease a 2024 Bronco Sport Big Ben for just $369 a month, only at your local Ford dealer. This newscast, sponsored by Mariano Morales Law. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. We have a new county that's been added into the air quality alerts, and it's pretty obvious which county was going to get added, Yakima County, and it's until further notice, in addition to Moro and Umatilla counties. Now, here's just a mosaic of what the air quality looks like in our region right now, but this leaves out some minute, fine, granular details. And so 
in Yakima and in the Yakima Valley, especially to the west of the interstate, there are some plots and there are some sensors that are picking up on air quality that is in the unhealthy to very unhealthy category at the very least. So if you reside in those areas this morning in the Yakima Valley, it doesn't even matter if you're in one of those sensitive groups you got to sport the N95, N95 mask anyway. So just uh, definitely some food for that for this morning. And this graphic, I think, is a perfect representation of, uh, of you know, just why the situation is so bad in Yakima for this morning. It's because winds are coming up out of the north and west, and this fire, specifically the Rimrock retreat fire is positioned to the north and west of Yakima. So that streams all the smoke into the Yakima Valley and the Tri-Cities are getting the leftovers of that and we'll continue to get that for the rest of today. Now I want you to pay attention to the smoke cycle into tomorrow as it looks like all the smoke and the haze is going to become in general a lot more widespread. So I think that's going to be the dominating weather story for the Tri-City water follies as we head into the weekend. And I'll show you what else we can expect for this weekend coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. Dozens of state, local, and tribal leaders were at the Clee Elum Dam yesterday to celebrate the reintroduction of sockeye salmon to the Yakima River Basin and the completion of a brand new juvenile fish passage facility. Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell tells us this solves a decades long problem. Populations of fish in the Yakima River Basin have dwindled over the years, in part due to the construction of dams like this one, which made it difficult for fish to migrate. This project hopes to change that. Officials celebrating the now completed Helix, a one of a kind juvenile fish passage project. Juvenile fish previously trapped in the lake by low water levels, now able to access the river with a tiered system. The entry point changing as the water level rises and falls. Fish moving into the facility and down a so-called water slide to safely exit out the other side of the dam to the river. As the salmon go, so go we. And we are now going to give them a shot. Crews now breaking ground on the second part of the project, a facility to collect adult fish and transport them by truck safely upstream. The salmon carry the hopes and our dreams on their backs, and we now need to bring them back. The goal to restore fish populations as a crucial cultural resource for the Yakima Nation, a driver for recreation in Washington State, and an important economic resource. The completion of these fish, fish passage projects will permanently reopen almost 30 miles of cool, protective tributary habitat for sockeye salmon upstream of the reservoir. That's the largest single reintroduction of sockeye habitat in the lower 48 states. The efforts not limited to the Cleelum Dam. We have at least a, a two dozen projects around the state of Washington financed by the Climate Commitment Act to do this kind of work. The Bureau of Reclamation has also announced an additional $16 million investment into projects across the Yakima River Basin. In Cleelum, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, are cold showers actually good for you? When we come back, we look at what experts are saying about how cold showers affect the human body. That's coming up in your health headlines. Drive into summer with a Honda CRV and Accord. Your fun to drive weekend getaway vehicles. From Honda, the 2024 Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com Best Value Brand. So act now to get an offer you'll love. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into the Honda Summer Event. I'm Jared Sessler, a Navy veteran, job creator, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. It was a great honor to receive President Trump's endorsement, and unlike my opponent, Dan Newhouse, who joined Democrats to impeach President Trump, I'll be a strong ally for the MAGA agenda. But an even greater honor would be to earn your support. I took an oath to this country when I began my military service, and I kept it. And I'm asking for your vote so I can take that oath once more in serving Congress as the conservative we deserve. At McCurley, we're here to help you find the vehicle that's right for you. Whether you're most at home surrounded by lots of friends.
hanging with your one best friend for an afternoon cruise. Or... Not a chance. Uh, could you show us something with a little less horsepower? Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. Because it's more than a vehicle. It's your way home. Find your way home in a Mazda certified pre-owned vehicle from McCurley Mazda. While many things in life change, one constant is the accuracy of our forecast. Because at Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather, accuracy matters. We're Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather, on your side. Always on your side. You should grow your hair out again. You miss my long hair. Just for fun. Yeah. For and the summer. It's... Have a hot girl summer. Next time, Hugh Jackman from Deadpool and Wolverine. Today at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. Operation Best Friend on Good Morning Northwest, sponsored by Windermere Group One. In health news, we are examining whether cold showers are good for you. Studies have shown ice baths can help with muscle recovery and stress relief, but do cold showers have the same effect? In immersive cold therapy, the cardiovascular system is briefly shocked, spiking both blood pressure and heart rate, and that could lead to improved blood flow since the body needs to work to return its normal, to its normal state and warm up. A 2022 study found participants who took a cold shower for up to a minute daily for two weeks reported less stress levels than the control group. Experts say beginners should start with 15 to 30 seconds of cold exposure and then add 15 seconds every few weeks. And people with cardiovascular issues, circulatory problems, sensation issues, or diabetes should not try cold showers without speaking to a doctor first. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, Jennifer Lopez celebrated her 55th birthday in the theme of a very popular show. We have all the extravagant details coming up in your entertainment news. We'll be right back. Let Quantum Legal protect you and be your champion on the legal battleground. Whether it's a fight for justice in the face of criminal accusations, personal injury claims, or workplace accidents, Quantum Legal is your unwavering ally. An aggressive offense is your greatest defense. Quantum Legal is the sword and shield you've been seeking. Your best defense, Quantum Legal. As a mother and community leader, I know what it means to work hard and make tough decisions. Como miembro de nuestra comunidad, I've seen firsthand the challenges we face. We need affordable groceries, quality health care, and safety in our neighborhoods. I am committed to listening and working for everyone in our community. Juntos podemos crear un futuro mejor para el 14th district. I am Ana Ruiz Kennedy. Echemos de ganas. I'll be honored to earn your vote. Board-certified psychiatric nurse practitioner Stephen Stokes provides mental health care for patients 13 and older at Prosser Memorial Health's Benton City Clinic. His services include the assessment and treatment for mental health issues and psychiatric medication management. Your mental health is vital to your overall well-being. To schedule an appointment with Stephen Stokes, call the Benton City Clinic at 509-588-4075. This is how we care. Join us during the anniversary truckload event. Our showrooms are overflowing with truckloads of top tier product. Get this triple power reclining fabric sofa available in two colors with the convenience of a cup holder and USB port on both fully reclining ends for only $14.95. Or get this gorgeous leather reclining sofa with cup holders, USB charging station, LED lighting, and built in sound system available in three colors for only $24.95. Only while supplies last and only at more furniture. Tiffany Smiley is not who she says she is. Tiffany Smiley started a PAC claiming to raise money to support conservative candidates, but contributions were funneled to pay off her own million dollar campaign debt. Of the almost $800,000 she raised, only $24,800 went to candidates. Instead, Tiffany used the money on luxury travel and to try to pay off her massive debt. Tiffany Smiley deceived her donors. Don't let her deceive you. 
I'm Dan Newhouse, and I approve this message. Good Morning Northwest streams all day at AppleValleyNewsNow.com and our mobile apps. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbert. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. And this is this this is a working camera in Yakima right now. This isn't just a gray screen we've put behind me. This is the actual view atop the Tandem Ridge looking down at the Yakima Valley. So much smoke is inundating the valley right now. Please sport the N95 mask as you head out the front door. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s, so some of us might need the light jacket as you're headed out the front door. A little bit later today, it's going to be one of the coolest days we've had in quite some time. We'll actually be about 5 to 10 degrees below average for this time of the year, which is really unfortunate because it would have been a nice day otherwise, but we're going to have all the haze and smoke to deal with, with some of the worst air quality obviously being in the Yakima Valley. Winds today will gust out of the north and west for Kittitas and Yakima counties, then out of the south and west for the rest of us, gusting between 20 to 35 miles per hour. And then for tonight, the winds will continue to gust out of the north and west between 20 to 25 miles per hour for the Kittitas and Yakima Valley, but elsewhere the winds should be light. And that northwest to southeast flow is going to continue to put some, some more very thick smoke into the Yakima Valley. Otherwise, temperatures in the 40s and 50s, so a little bit brisk out there. And we should be warmer as we head into Friday, but still below average for this time of the year. Then we'll have more seasonal weather into this weekend and well into the middle of next week. Also, we are tracking the return of some more thunderstorm chances from Sunday through Wednesday. It looks like Tuesday is probably going to be the most active of those days, and our fuels are still going to be very dry by then. So that means that the potential for fire starts will certainly still be in play. Okay, here's the seven day forecast for the Tri Cities. Comfy with 80s for Thursday and Friday, more seasonal for this weekend, and then a little shower chance on Tuesday. For Yakima, we'll have terrible air quality for the short term at least, near 90 for this weekend, and then a thunderstorm chance for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. For Hermiston, will be hazy for the next couple of days. We'll have a little shower chance for Tuesday, otherwise sunny and seasonal from Saturday and beyond. And then for Walla Walla, we'll be in the 80s through Sunday, hitting 90 again by Monday and watching the lightning potential for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you, Josh. In entertainment news now, Jennifer Lopez turned 55 yesterday and she celebrated it Bridgerton style. Mm -hmm. She shared some pictures and videos from her Bridgerton themed birthday party on social media. It featured outfits, music, horse and carriages, Ooh. fitting the Regency era show's style and theme. There was a horse and carriage, a quick paced violin and a ballroom dance with men dressed in long coats, white socks and loafers and women in white gloves and long dresses. Long coats, you know, that's your style, Josh, right? Definitely. <laughs> well, her caption on her Instagram post said, quote, dearest gentle reader, dot, 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 and a splendid <laughs> evening was had by all. And that's a nod to the show if you guys are familiar with it. <laughs> and Lady Lopez appeared to wear not one, but two different birthday gowns throughout the soiree. Of course. Well, there was also a full orchestra, complete with a harpist, along with ornately decorated dining tables and what looked like larger than life floral arrangements and of course like the queen she is she sat in a large white and gold throne during the party <laughs> I, I I'm loving all these Bridgerton themed parties I feel like more people oh, are I know doing you are. that I would love to have one I, I love the show we'll have to throw you guys a Bridgerton party I just wouldn't know how Please to throw do. it you just it, I've it's, never it sounds too it. expensive like too many big it's flowers so floral arrangements yes. mm. and I, I just want to say as an academic note in this newsroom, there are so many British accents from oh. so many from so many different people. Lots of all sorts of accents. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if we can like we love impressions over here. Bridgerton, the blame, but. <laughs> not. <laughs> well, staying in Bridgerton themed news, we're learning which character from the show will lead the story in the next season of the hit Netflix Can series. You tell that I had a say a in this bit. block right here. I love Bridgerton. We all know. <laughs> well, each season focuses on a different sibling story. So Netflix revealed that season four will focus on the love story of Benedict Bridgerton, the second brother. And there was some confusion trending after the last episode on who the next season would be mm. about. He is portrayed by actor Luke Thompson in the show is based on a popular book series. Now, Netflix has not announced a release date for season four of the show yet. 
yet. All right. I think they're saying it might be two years, but it's always, you always have to wait for your, your good shows, your you favorite have to shows. Wait. Yeah, I I'm know. sure you're very excited. Patience. <laughs> I'll Patience. try to be patient. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Up next on Good Morning Northwest, Friends of Franklin Fire 3 are hosting a Q&A session with Chief Mike Harris. And the topic of discussion, the fire levy lid lift the district is trying to pass this year. Details coming up. Plus, President Biden addressed the nation yesterday. This comes after announcing he's not seeking re-election. We have what he said in our next half hour. Keep it. At Mattress Depot USA, we're sort of like matchmakers. We match your body needs and sleeping habits with the perfect mattress for you. Low prices every day. Mattress Depot USA. I learned the value of hard work right here in these fields as my immigrant parents pick crops. I graduated from Yakima Valley College and Gonzaga, worked for Congress and the state legislature. Now I'm running for state Senate because we need someone who will fight for Central Washington. We're losing good paying jobs and warehouses are closing. I'm Maria Beltran and I ask for your vote because our best days are ahead of us. Paid for by friends Maria Beltran. To see if you qualify for Hanford Worker Compensation, please call Smart Law for a free consultation at 509-735-5555. Workers and the families of deceased workers who worked at the Hanford site are now eligible for compensation for diseases and illnesses, including neurological, respiratory and heart conditions, cancers, and beryllium-related disorders. This may be in addition to compensation already being received. Call Smart Law at 509-735-5555 for Hanford Worker Compensation. Smart Law. Smart Choice. Farming at any scale is often about using what you have at hand to get the job done. Life definitely gets a little easier and more enjoyable when you have the right tools. It's important to me to be a good and reliable farmer, and that means taking care of the environment too. I want to see the valley continue to thrive and provide food long into the future. I just love what I do, and I wake up every day thankful to provide healthy, local food to my community. Stop by today and feel the power of Pingree. I have worked with Senator Curtis King for the past two years, and I know how much he cares about the constituents in his district. He is well respected by both parties. He is results oriented, and he works very hard for the district. We got to elect Curtis King. He has a proven record. We're very lucky to have him as a representative in the Senate. There is no better candidate for the job than Senator Curtis King. I'm Senator Curtis King, and I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. An affordable, adjustable bed from Mattress Depot USA will help you sleep better. And help alleviate aches and pains, sleep apnea, and snoring. Low prices every day, Mattress Depot USA. Operation Best Friend on Good Morning Northwest, sponsored by Windermere Group One. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good Morning Northwest on your side. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica DeLal. I'm Jill Sperling. And I'm Josh Colbert. All right, Josh, we've been looking at that Yakima camera atop the, where's that camera at? Atanum Ridge. The Atanum yes. Ridge, and it was smoky, and it just kept getting progressively smokier. So how's it looking now? The well, same? it's not, the problem is that if Ooh. you look, you don't see, you just see gray. You that was like see. a gray image, just like yes. a... Yes, just kind of of looking, looking into the void this morning, and this is all the smoke that's pouring in from the north and west of Yakima from the Retreat and Rimrock fire, which is now 8,000 acres. It is 0% contained, and if yesterday was any indication, we'll probably have some very, very tough fire activity and behavior again for today, which means more smoke, which means more tough air quality for the Yakima Valley. Thankfully, temperature is not that tough this morning, 50s and 60s for most spots, so maybe some of us would need a very light jacket. But by 8 in the morning, at least for the Tri-Cities, it's already going to be t-shirt weather. It's going to be a lot of that throughout the course of today. 
Today is actually going to be one of the coolest days we've had in quite some time. We'll be about 5 to 10 degrees below average for this time of the year. Here's the bottom line for the forecast for the foreseeable future. Very smoky in the Yakima Valley. Cooler for this week, especially for today and for tomorrow. We'll be a little bit more seasonal into this weekend, but most of the thunderstorm chances should hold off until next week, which is going to up the ante when it comes to fire risk. But fire fuel energy is up there for today as well, and I'll show you some of that data coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. The Friends of Franklin Fire 3 are hosting a Q&A session today with Fire Chief Mike Harris. The topic of discussion, the fire levy lid lift the district is trying to pass this year. This meeting is happening from 5 to 6 p.m. over Facebook, Zoom, and in person. Some common questions are what is a levy lead, a levy lid lift and what district serves where you live? Chief Harris says this will be an especially important meeting if you live in the area covered by Franklin 3. But what's really important for those that attend is those that live within our fire district. And our website has a map of Franklin County Fire District 3. So if you live inside the shaded areas, and then we provide service to you. And we want to hear from you, and we would like you to hear, you know, the story about why we're going out for a levy lift on August 6th. The district is looking for people to ask the hard questions. The district is asking voters to raise the fire levy from 88 cents to $1.28 per thousand on this primary election ballot. This would add a full-time firefighter to seasonal wildland firefighters and build up a reserve for improvements at Fire Station 33. Find the link to the meeting on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. Ben Franklin Transit will provide shuttle service to Art in the Park and the Tri-City Water Follies this weekend. The fair is by donation only, with the proceeds benefiting the Mid-Columbia Meals on Wheels. For Art in the Park, free service will take place Friday and Saturday. Those shuttles run every 15 minutes from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Some of the stops include Howard Amon Park and the Uptown Shopping Center. As for Tri-City Water Folly service, that's for Saturday and Sunday. Those shuttles run every hour from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, returning 20 minutes after the last heap to the Kennewick side of the river from Lampson Stadium in Kennewick and even out to the Hapo Center in Pasco. Turning to political news now, President Biden says it's time to pass the torch to a younger generation and that that's the best way to unite the country. That was part of his message to the nation when he spoke from the Oval Office last night. Biden officially ended his re-election campaign over the weekend amid calls from Democrats to step aside. While Biden called on voters to preserve democracy in November, he also used his moment in front of the camera to reflect on his five decades of public service. My fellow Americans, it's been the privilege of my life to serve this nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Claymont, Delaware, one day sit behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office as President of the United States. But here I am. President Biden did not mention former President Trump by name, but he did praise Vice President Kamala Harris, calling her experienced, tough, and capable. Harris, whom Biden has endorsed, is now the party's presumptive nominee. Three groups in the Tri-Cities are giving back and helping kids step out in style. Over a dozen kids with the Benton and Franklin Boys and Girls Clubs were able to get a free haircut at Legacy Barbershop yesterday. This isn't the first time they've gotten free haircut donations from the Kennewick Police Department Foundation and the Barber's Times from Legacy Barbershop. Branch Director Pita Nunez says they want to continue this opportunity for kids in the program because helping kids in need is what the Boys and Girls Club is about. For our kids to like feel good and look good, we thought that like having the barbershop experience was like the perfect way to like not only give back to them, but to help them feel like their best. Some of the kids just got off the chair and they, they just walk differently. They walk more confident. And so to see that alone is just so uplifting. Those kids are looking snazzy and this mm -hmm. isn't the last time free haircuts will come around for children in the Boys and Girls Club program. Nunez says there are two more opportunities this year and we've got those dates on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. 
Apple Valley News Now's restaurant showdown is still going on. We're looking for the area's best restaurant. Yes, so we started about two weeks ago with 64 places, and now after two rounds and thousands of votes, only 16 restaurants remain. So let's keep it going until we find that number one. So to make your vote known, scan the QR code that's on your screen now to vote with your smartphone, or you can visit our website, applevalleynewsnow.com, click on contest, and then select restaurant showdown to vote. And don't forget, after voting, you can enter to win a $25 gift card from STCU. You can find more information at applevalleynewsnow.com. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, the Department of Justice has finally finalized a plea agreement with Boeing. We have the details up next. Plus, Chief Meteorologist Josh Colbreth has what you can expect from the weather today. That's coming up in his forecast in just a few minutes. Stacy Lee, Camp View First Alert Weather. Watch tonight. Smoke City for Less is your one-stop shop in Kennewick, Richland, West Richland, Hermiston, Road 68 in Pasco, and at the new location on West Court Street in Pasco. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. at all six locations. Get the lowest prices on the largest selection of vape mods, classic to tropical vape flavors, batteries, cigars, tobacco products, kratom, and specialty products too. Don't waste time in other places. Go to Smoke City for Less. We smoke the competition. From Apple Valley News Now, this is Medically Speaking. My name is Lauren Martin. I started to work out at Hanford in 1982, and for 20 years I worked with the fleet, uh, repairing cranes, locomotives, cars, ambulances, fire trucks, everything. In After 20 years, then I came down with a disease. There are some very, very expensive drugs and my copay on that is zero. All I have to do is pick up the phone and it's there. So we'll definitely evaluate their past employment. As a registered nurse myself, I'll look through their medical records and I'll look to see maybe what medical conditions they have and we'll be very upfront with them, honest about whether they do have a claim that could warrant benefits or not and just kind of let them know what those next steps are, the timeline of how long it could take for them to get approved. I'm Jared Sessler, a Navy veteran, job creator, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. It was a great honor to receive President Trump's endorsement, and unlike my opponent Dan Newhouse, who joined Democrats to impeach President Trump, I'll be a strong ally for the MAGA agenda. But an even greater honor would be to earn your support. I took an oath to this country when I began my military service, and I kept it. And I'm asking for your vote so I can take that oath once more and serve in Congress as the conservative we deserve. It's the 44th anniversary sale at Walker's Furniture. This is one of our favorite events where we get to celebrate these great years with you. And that means friends and family pricing throughout the store with savings up to 44% off and get special financing for up to five years. So you can get it today and pay over time. From, From our family, family to yours, yours, we'd like to thank you for 44 wonderful years. It's the all-new Apple Valley News Now weekend with local news, regional news, first alert weather, and much more every Saturday and Sunday, including a complete wrap-up Sunday night at 11. Apple Valley News Now weekend from Apple Valley News Now, always on your side. Round three voting is now open in Apple Valley News Now's Restaurant Showdown. When you vote, be sure to enter to win a $25 gift card from STCU. We're giving away four cards during each round from STCU, Les Schwab Tires, and Whitman Hill Winery. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Colberth. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. Our fire, fire fuel energy for today isn't going to be as impressive as it was just a couple days back as we're going to be down into the 86 percentile compared to historical percentiles for Kittitas and Yakima counties. These Values will also be a little bit lower for the lower Columbia Basin, only up into the 91st percentile as opposed to the 99th percentile, which we just saw a couple days back. Still up into the 94th percentile, though, for the Blue Mountains, which includes southern and southern and eastern portions of Morrow and Umatilla County. So 
even though there's technically no red flag warning in place for today, these fuels are still pretty dry, so fires could start or spread very quickly for today. And obviously, the active fires that we have right now in Yakima County are prompting some very tough air quality, some very hazy conditions, some very smoky conditions in the Yakima Valley. So that's what we're going to be tracking for today. Even though the temperatures are going to be very nice, we'll be about 5 to 10 degrees below average for this time of the year. A little bit warmer for tomorrow, which is day one of the water follies off of the Columbia River. And I'll show you if we can expect this kind of weather to keep up as we head into day two and day three of the water follies. That's going to be coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Josh. In your business headlines this morning, the Department of Justice has finalized a plea agreement with Boeing. The DOJ shared details of the plea deal yesterday. The troubled aviation company will plead guilty to a felony charge of defrauding the U.S. government and pay more than $243 million in fines. Boeing also admitted to defrauding the Federal Aviation Administration when seeking permission for the 737 MAX plane to carry passengers. The agreement also states Boeing's board of directors will have to hold a meeting with victims' families and their legal representatives. Boeing will also have to invest at least $455 million into its compliance, quality, and safety programs. The plea deal is subject to approval of a federal judge. In response to the controversy over the inconsistent size of its burrito bowls, Chipotle is making some changes. The CEO of Chipotle is promising to make generous portions more consistent among its more than 3,500 restaurants. For months now, customers have been complaining on social media about burrito bowl portions. <laughs> CEO Brian Nichols says there was never a directive to provide less food. The problem is there's just a lot of inconsistency among the chain's locations. Nickel pledged to correct that by promising retraining to what he calls the right standards. And that's good news for workers. They have not been happy with the trend where customers video record them preparing the food so they don't shortchange the order. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, Walla Walla City Council has a new rule regarding people sleeping outside in public places. We have the in-depth report coming up. Upgrade your home's busiest areas with waterproof flooring built to last. This month, take it off the wish list and get it done. At Floor and Home, you dream, we install. Love the home you live in. from Mattress Depot USA. Low prices. Every day we beat any competitor's price. Selection. All sizes and brands like Sealy, Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic. Customer service. Our sleep specialists averaged 10 years in the industry. Check out our reviews. Comfort guarantee. 120 nights worth. Same day delivery. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Local. Born here, live here. Come see us today. Low prices every day. Mattress Depot USA. Checking. Open yours today at any Yakima Federal Savings and Loan. Indulge in Legends Casino's seafood buffet experience. Discover a feast of premium crab legs, succulent shrimp, and an array of delectable ocean-inspired dishes. Elevate your evenings with Legends Seafood Buffet every Thursday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. I learned the value of hard work right here in these fields as my immigrant parents pick crops. I graduated from Yakima Valley College and Gonzaga, worked for Congress and the state legislature. Now I'm running for state Senate because we need someone who will fight for Central Washington. We're losing good paying jobs and warehouses are closing. 
I'm Maria Beltran, and I ask for your vote because our best days are ahead of us. Paid for by friends Maria Beltran. This is Lucky 13. 13 questions are all that stand between tonight's contestants and up to $1 million. Gina Rodriguez and Shaquille O'Neal host Lucky 13. New tonight on ABC. Upgrade your home's busiest areas with waterproof flooring built to last. This month, take it off the wish list and get it done. At Floor and Home, you dream, we install. Love the home you live in. Good morning, Northwest. Streams all day at AppleValleyNewsNow.com and our mobile apps. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. In depth, the city of Walla Walla is looking to change its approach to homelessness. Last night, the city council approved a new rule for the downtown area that would ban people from sleeping in public between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. from April to October. Ahead of that vote, our Alyssa Warner spoke with the organization behind the Walla Walla Sleep Center, one of the only overnight homeless shelters in the region. These are not fancy shelters, mm -hmm. uh, but just a safe place to sleep at night is a big deal. The Supreme Court ruled earlier this year that cities are allowed to ban people from sleeping outside in public places, overturning a federal court ruling from 2018. A Walla Walla nonprofit is working to make sure that people have a safe place to sleep and more. We're here 24 hours a day. We have on-site services available as well as space for community partners. That's a big part of what's, help, what's been able to help us uh, reduce those calls for uh, need for law enforcement and other services in the community because we have people on site to be able to help manage uh, things that may come up. There are rules for this community, but unlike some others across the state, you don't have to be clean and sober before you arrive, and pets are allowed to stay with their people. We know that especially for people who have been chronically homeless and have had a life, that, that, that pet is such a big part of any progress they're going to make in, in moving to a better life. The Walla Walla Alliance for the Homeless was formed nearly a decade ago. Board Secretary Chuck Hindman has been part of the project since the beginning. It didn't start well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think one of the cool things, though, is, you know, as, as these relationships have grown, as this, the board and the volunteers have continued to do that work, we've seen a significant change in the sentiment towards the organization. Eighty percent of our people are local. Um, we haven't seen any buses from Seattle. Uh, <laughs> For sure. Uh, it's, it's local people, and, and, and uh, we're taking care of our, our own folks. You know, when we presented the idea of our expansion um, a year and a half or so ago to the city council, we received un uh, unanimous support to make that happen and funding to help get it done. Uh, and that's something that just simply wouldn't have happened five years before. The Alliance recently expanded beyond the sleep center to a transitional housing space, helping people cross the bridge between sleeping outdoors to having a stable home. Executive Director Jordan Green credits community partnerships as a key reason why this effort is working. Each year, I think on average, we're close to about 40 people from 2021 on uh, that, that move out of camp and into a better situation. So whether that's a treatment bed or long-term housing with some kind of a housing voucher or housing on their own or relocation with friends or family somewhere else. But there is still always the lingering question. How can we do more? Reporting in Walla Walla, Alyssa Warner, Apple Valley News Now. Keep it right here. We've got the morning sprint up next. But first, here's what's coming up on Good Morning America. In this morning's GMA first look up close and personal with a great white shark. Oh, he's got some, some scrapes on him. Watch as the shark goes from feeding on a nearby whale carcass. Oh my God, dude. To trying to feast on their boat. He's going to eat the boat. We can see his beady eyes, his teeth are above the water and we're three feet away. And you're just thinking, like, you know, I'm glad I'm in a boat. I'm glad I'm not swimming. And it was pretty much the size of our boat. And to see one almost come up on the swimming deck and bite our prop. We were pretty nervous that it was going to do some damage to the back of the boat. And scientists say we're seeing a lot more of them coming in close to shore. The real big message here is that temperatures are warming. Um, it's increasing habitat availability for sharks. And coming up at 7 a.m., why we're seeing an increase of these baby predators and where you might spot them with your GMA First Look. I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. be used to living with your albuterol asthma rescue inhaler, but it's a bit of a dinosaur because it only treats your symptoms, not inflammation. 
Treating both symptoms and inflammation with rescue is supported by asthma experts. Finally, there's a modern way to treat symptoms and asthma attacks. Air Supra is the first ever dual action rescue inhaler that treats your asthma symptoms and helps prevent attacks. Air Supra is the only rescue FDA approved to do both. Air Supra is an as needed rescue inhaler and should not be used as a maintenance treatment for asthma. Get medical help right away if your breathing does not improve, continues to worsen, or for serious allergic reactions. Using Air Supra more than prescribed could be life threatening. Serious side effects include heart problems, increased risk of thrush, or infections. Welcome to the modern age of dual action asthma rescue. Ask your doctor if Air Supra is right for you. Now, the morning sprint. It's now time for your 6 o'clock morning sprint. We start off with your national headlines. The House of Representatives voted to create a task force to investigate the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. Now, the vote was unanimous with 416 votes in favor and zero opposed. The bipartisan task force will have seven Republicans and six Democrats. Appointments will be announced today. The task force will have subpoena authority as it conducts its investigation. It's required to deliver a final report on its findings no later than December 13th. In your health headlines this morning, the CDC says the infant mortality rate in the United States rose for the first time in decades. According to the new report, nearly 21,000 babies died in 2022 before the age of one. Overall, there was a 3% increase from the year before in 2021. And some of the leading causes of infant deaths were birth defects, unintentional injuries, and maternal complications. In sports-related news, COVID-19 has landed in Paris. This comes after a five or five Australian water polo players tested positive this week. An Olympic spokesperson says there are protocols in place, such as masking up and limiting contact. They are also reminding people to wash their hands regularly. The Winter Olympics will return to Salt Lake City after 32 years. It hosted them in 2002, and now the city has won its bid to host the 2034 Winter Olympics. This was after a vote by the International Olympic Committee in Paris yesterday. Salt Lake plans to reuse all the facilities from its 2002 games. Organizers estimate the city will spend about $4 billion to host the games. Now we go to your top five local things you need to know this morning. Starting off, the Rimrock Retreat Fire is threatening homes and infrastructure in Yakima County. The fire now causing a system-by-system -system rolling shutdown for the Yakima Titan Irrigation District. The district has declared a state of emergency, saying the fire's path is alongside its 114-year-old main canal and is again threatening critical infrastructure. The Washington State Department of Natural Resources Southeast Region has temporarily closed the Atanum State Forest due to increased activity from the adjacent retreat fire burning near Rimrock Lake. All Atanum State Forest recreation sites will be closed until further notice, except for the Atanum and Atanum Meadows campgrounds. Walla Walla is changing its approach to homelessness. The Walla Walla City Council has approved a new rule banning people from sleeping in public between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. from April to October. The city says now that the Walla Walla Sleep Center is open 24-7, there's no reason for anyone to sleep outside during the day. The Friends of Franklin Fire 3 are hosting a Q&A session today with Fire Chief Mike Harris. The topic of discussion, the fire levy lid lift the district is trying to pass this year. This meeting is happening from 5 to 6 p.m. over Facebook, Zoom and in person. Chief Harris says this will be an especially important meeting if you live in the area covered by Franklin 3. BFT is providing free shuttle service to Art in the Park and the Tri-City Water Follies this weekend. The fair is by donation only, with the proceeds benefiting Mid-Columbia Meals on Wheels. For Art in the Park, free service will take place Friday and Saturday. Those shuttles run every 15 minutes from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. As for Tri-City Water Follies, that's for Saturday and Sunday, and those shuttles run every hour from 8 a.m. to noon. All right, centipedes, beads, uh, shrimp, crabs, and about two-thirds of the animals on Earth can, think, uh, can thank a half-billion-year-old fossil. Ah, so <laughs> scientists say this strange taco-shaped creature that you're about to see on your screen, for the type of jaw, or they're saying that they, the type of jaws they have today is, is what's strange about it. Yeah, in this case, we're talking about 
mandibles or pincer-like jaws. They weren't nearly as common 508 million years ago when the or Odararia, I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> that, Alada, roamed the earth. This aquatic shrimp-like arthropod was the focus of a new analysis of fossils published Wednesday in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B. The researchers examined the secrets under the animal's taco-like shell and found the first solid evidence that it had mandibles. They determined it likely found food in the open ocean, not just near the sea floor. So I don't see a taco in there. I just saw a big fish. I don't know. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Kind of like a manta ray or something. And I don't yeah. want to call it a taco because tacos are yummy and that looks kind of eh. Just looks yeah. like typical prehistoric stuff. Right, it just looks like yeah. a fossil. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to yeah, fight into that. Well, check this out. Smoke from area wildfires has a really interesting effect on the sun, especially as it gets lower in the sky towards sunset. So these images were sent into us from, from James Conright. He says he took them in Yakima near Fisher's Golf Course. So thank you, James, for sending these in. These are quite interesting. Yeah, and you can really feel that smoke too. And of course, we can't forget about the other thing up in the sky, the mm -hmm. moon. This picture <laughs> taken by our very own Morgan Huff last night. Thank you, Morgan. You can see a cloud of smoke lingering in the air, turning the moon bright red. It's a very cool effect, but also yeah. not so great. It's eerie looking. It's yeah, it's, it's always this silver lining it for makes this me time of the put year. On, like sad music. Yeah. Sad music. Yeah. But I like to do that anyways. It's it's yeah. always the silver lining because. It, it puts more smoke particulates up into the sky. That makes sunrises, sunsets more vivid, but also it's smoky out there, yeah. so it's a catch-22. <laughs> Nothing beautiful about this image this morning in Yakima, this view atop a Tanum Ridge. We're not even seeing the valley down below because the smoke is so thick from the retreat and Rimrock fire, those winds out of the northwest bringing all that thick smoke into the Yakima Valley. For this morning, you might need a light jacket. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Definitely need an N95 mask, though, for this morning and likely throughout most of the day for the Yakima Valley with all that thick smoke. Otherwise, today is going to be comfortable in terms of temperatures. We'll be about 5 to 10 degrees below average for this time of the year. It's one of the coolest days we've had in a while. Also, the winds gusting mainly out of the west between 20 to 35 miles per hour. Strongest wind gusts being in the Kittitas Valley. Then for tonight, wind gusts still between 20 to 25 miles per hour for the Kittitas and Yakima Valleys, and that will continue to put very thick smoke into the Yakima Valley. But elsewhere, lingering haze, overnight lows dropping down into the 40s and 50s. Be a little bit warmer for Friday, still below average for this time of the year, and the more seasonal stuff for Saturday, Sunday, and beyond. We hold on to this level of heat through midweek next week. Also, we're going to track some little thunderstorm chances from Sunday through Wednesday. It looks like Tuesday is probably going to be the most favorable favorable day for those chances, and that's going to be the most favorable day for more fire starts, unfortunately, as our fuels are still going to be pretty dry by then, albeit not as dry as they've been for this week. Here's a seven day forecast for the Tri-Cities. We'll be comfy with 80s for today and tomorrow. More seasonal for this weekend and a little shower chance on Tuesday. For Yakima, we'll have terrible air quality for the short term, at least near 90 for this weekend, and then a thunderstorm chance for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. For Hermiston, we'll be hazy for the next couple of days. A little shower chance for Tuesday, otherwise sunny and seasonal from Saturday and beyond. Finally, for Walla Walla, we'll be in the 80s through Sunday, maybe hitting 90 again by Monday and watching that lightning potential for Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you, Josh, and thank you guys for watching Good Morning Northwest. You can always find the latest updates on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. Good Morning America is up next, and we'll be back with your local news and weather tonight at 5. Have a great day.